So we're going to start in about 30 seconds. My name is Abraham Lloyd, and we are here today to talk about integrating commerce and marketing clouds via the Marketing Cloud Connector for B2C Commerce. So I'm going to talk very fast because there's a lot to get into over the course of these next 20 minutes. Um, I'm also doing a session on cross-cloud integration with some team members of mine in room 207 at 11 o'clock. So who here is interested in cross-cloud integration? This next session in room 207 is highly recommended as well. All right. It's uh, time. And whoops, let me turn that on. All right, perfect. So. Good morning, my name's Abraham Lloyd. I'm a technical architect with Commerce Cloud. I work within our customer success group at Salesforce and we're here today to talk about integrating commerce and marketing cloud. This would not be a Salesforce presentation without the following slide. Uh, one of the things I love about Salesforce is that we have a culture of gratitude that we practice internally as well as with customers. So on behalf of Salesforce and myself, I want to say thank you. We appreciate who you are, your business, as well as your partnership. This would also not be a Salesforce presentation without the forward-looking statement. As a reminder, Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please make all your purchasing decisions based on the current state of the product, not based on what you might hear from a guy like me in a session like this. All right, I introduced myself. Let me, there we go. All right, so when we think about cross-cloud uh, integrations, we typically see uh, one thing. Customers are fairly clear on their use cases. Customers are also fairly clear on the technology, or at least directionally clear on the technology to use. To be successful, there are a number of other things. We call them foundations that really revolve around best practices that we found working with customers, our product teams, and partners. So in today's presentation, we're going to talk about the Marketing Cloud Connector, but we're also going to touch on some of these foundational topics that pertain to cross-cloud, but specifically integrating commerce and marketing. So what are the foundations? Well. If you're integrating cross-cloud, one of the things you're doing is you're moving a lot of data around, right? And you're doing this because you want to be able to relate and identify your customer. Well, in order to do that, you need a strategy. Similarly, as you're updating your customer, identifying them, synchronizing profile updates, within your use cases, you need a way to be able to resolve who they are. All right, this is called customer resolution. We'll talk about this. Who here has heard of Customer 360? Right, so this is part of the value 360 provides. So with all that said, let's pivot now to integrating commerce and marketing. So what are the things that you can do with the Marketing Cloud Connector? Well, one is abandoned cart. Who here is familiar or is interested in implementing abandoned cart or abandoned scenarios within your storefront? Right. Well, leveraging the Marketing Cloud Connector for B2C commerce, this is something you can do. Additionally, what you can do is generate product recommendations, leveraging commerce cloud data, and embed them within your Marketing Cloud emails. Uh, who, uh, who here is familiar with Commerce Cloud? Right. Who here likes writing emails or building email templates in Commerce Cloud? Right. Facetious, but yes, no one, right? It's a development activity. Well, one of the operational benefits of implementing the Marketing Cloud Connector is that you are able now to divest any of the email authoring uh, you know, activities that your development teams are doing and move them to the marketing team. So what this does is this gives you additional efficiency. Marketing teams can move faster. You can leverage these emails within journeys. Who here likes Commerce Cloud's email analytic reports? Right, no one, because they don't exist. But guess what? They do exist in Marketing Cloud. So what is some of the justification behind this, right? So why are these use cases important? Why do they matter? Well, they matter because they generate results. 69% of shoppers are checking out um, 
are open to abandonment scenarios. 14% lift on personalized recommendations generated by Commerce Cloud or Marketing Cloud in this case. Transactional messages are eight times more likely to be opened and customers respond 54% of the time to an offer that's placed in front of them through a coupon. You can leverage the Marketing Cloud connector for B2C Commerce to realize all of these uh, use cases. So let's say you're interested in these, how do I take advantage of them? One of the things that we just released on help.salesforce.com, you can download these looking at the URL in the upper right hand corner, are solution kits. Now what these solution kits are, are use case documents describing how to implement these use cases. All right, They're going to provide you with context as well as directional guidance that's both strategic and technical as well as, ex as explain what the solution considerations are. So for the Marketing Cloud Connector, we have four solution kits available, abandoned cart, transaction emails, personalized recommendations, as well as coupon redemption. So they include an overview. You get a workflow of what's it like to actually implement the use case. You, you're, you're given configuration guidance. You're also given solution design considerations, things to be aware of, pitfalls to be weary of, as well as additional implementation resources. So anytime you see Einstein says, remember this, this is something for you to take away from this presentation. If you're interested in these use cases, the first thing to do is to download these solution kits and read them. You could grab them via the URL in the upper right hand corner. All right. So I have an idea what my use cases are. What's the technology I'm going to use to make these real? Well, you're going to leverage the Marketing Cloud Connector for B2C Commerce. All right, now let's talk a little bit about what it is. The Marketing Cloud Connector is a development framework that accelerates integration between commerce and marketing cloud. Who here is uh, familiar with Salesforce connectors? Right, okay, so Salesforce connectors, they tend to be productized, they tend to be configuration driven, they support a core set of use cases, they're upgradable. It's important to recognize this about the Marketing Cloud Connector for B2C Commerce. This is a development and integration framework. Think of it like a mobile SDK, all right? It contains support for a, a fixed set of use cases, but you can customize the implementation. You can also leverage the hooks within the connector to implement all new use cases. The integration is done via REST. What Commerce Cloud does is it leverages uh, Marketing Cloud's really, really, really broad REST APIs to be able to tell Marketing Cloud when to drop a customer in a journey or when to trigger a transactional email. email. One thing to keep in mind about this, because it's a development framework, it's not a productized solution, and as a result, it's not eligible for technical support, all right? If you're implementing this, it's going to require that you do two things. You're going to have to do configuration in Marketing Cloud. You're also going to have to customize your Commerce Cloud storefront, specifically to implement data feeds that we leverage, as well as replace the legacy email hooks within your storefront with the Marketing Cloud custom hook that are available from the connector. Who here, again, is interested in abandoned cart? All right, thank you. So it's important to set expectations, so we want to make this clear as well. If you're interested in any of the abandonment use cases, implementing these requires a professional services engagement through Marketing Cloud Professional Services. This is not something that can be done by an SI. This is not something that can be done by a customer's development team. It's an activity that has to be performed by Marketing Cloud Professional Services. If you want to learn more about this, I'm happy to discuss this after the session. Uh, additionally, if you're interested in abandonment scenarios, Personalization Builder as a product within Marketing Cloud is required. So last piece about the Marketing Cloud Connector. Because we're integrating with Marketing Cloud, a lot of the integration, what it does is it leverages data extensions, OK? So what you need to do and be mindful of is to take advantage and practice data extension best practices well, as far as importing data and managing data extensions in general. When you're working with Marketing Cloud, you typically only want to import data for one of two reasons, all right? You're, you want to personalize or you want to segment. So. Be mindful of that. 
Don't import lots of data in Marketing Cloud for a possible future use case. Only import what you need. All right. So we're going to talk about features now of the Marketing Cloud Connector and what it enables. The first is personalized journeys. What you can do through the connector is trigger personalized journeys from within Commerce Cloud. So you can author the journey in Marketing Cloud, and then based on a customer's activity via the storefront, choose to drop them in a journey via a custom hook. You have the ability to embed email recommendations as well. And what's great is that these email recommendations are actually driven by Commerce Cloud catalog, product, and customer or, uh, purchase data. So you could leverage the Einstein email recommendation engine to produce these product recommendations and embed them in your email. You can also extend the customer profile experience within Commerce Cloud to include subscription management. So if you want to have your account page, extend it with the ability to update your Marketing Cloud subscriptions. You have the ability to include this as well. And then lastly, you have the ability to send transactional and behavioral emails. So when you think about this set of items, these are all about operational efficiency, right? So I get to generate uh, personalized journeys. I can trigger them. I can generate email recommendations and embed them in my emails. I can also allow customers to manage their subscriptions. These last two items are really about messaging. How do I want to engage my customer? Let's dive a little bit deeper into that. So we can send two kinds of emails from the marketing, uh, from marketing cloud, leveraging the B2C commerce connector. The first are transactional emails. The second are behavioral emails. You may be asking, what's the difference between a transactional and a behavioral email? Well, I am here to tell you. Transactional emails, well, candidly, are kind of what they say, right? They get triggered or generated when a customer commits a transaction or completes an event. So an example of that is, uh, I forgot my password. I want to receive my order confirmation. I want to get my order shipment update. Uh, I just registered my account, so I want a welcome email. Or I submitted a case, and I want an email saying thank you for my case. I do something, I get an email message. Behavioral emails are a little different because what they do is they're driven based on customer behavior. Excuse me. So as an example, with abandoned cart, the way abandoned cart works is that Marketing Cloud through CollectJS will monitor a customer's storefront behavior and then using the trigger that is implemented within Marketing Cloud, check all of the behavior data that it's collected and look for customers that have added items to their cart but not checked out within a specific window. When it finds these customers, it will pull them, put them in an audience, and that audience can now be routed to a journey. Within that journey, a behavioral email is generated. So the trigger piece that I described here, this is the piece that Marketing Cloud Professional Services needs to complete. These are the different kinds of behavioral scenarios that we currently support. In order to make all of this work, we need what? Data, right? So here's the data that we leverage from Commerce Cloud to make all of this real. We're going to leverage catalog data, specifically product and product variation data, pricing and availability. We have the ability to tell Marketing Cloud uh, in, in near real time through Marketing Cloud's REST API when products become available. Similarly, when they do not, this is important because you don't want to recommend a product that you can't sell. We're also importing customer data so that you can develop your segmentation model within Marketing Cloud using Commerce Cloud customers. And we're also importing order data so that you could use this to help inform recommendations. We're also tracking customer behavior if you've implemented Personalization Builder through Marketing Cloud's CollectJS implementation. All right, so we've talked about the use case. We've talked about the features. We've talked about data. Let's walk through what this really looks like in practice, all right? So this is a data integration model. It's going to give you the workflow of how data moves from commerce to marketing cloud and then how you can leverage that in both clouds. So to start, we're going to begin in the commerce cloud staging environment. Uh, the marketing cloud connector includes a data feed framework that you could use to export uh, content, product, promotional data from staging in CSV format to Marketing Cloud's SFTP. We're also going to do the same thing in our production environment, but this time we're going to do it with customer data and order data. We do it from production here because, well, that's where our, product, our customers live, and that's where their orders are placed. 
from the Marketing Cloud SFTP. We have automations that kick off from Marketing Cloud and pull that data into Marketing Cloud. Now, once it's in Marketing Cloud, Marketing Cloud now has the ability to leverage all of its best of breed tools to do all of the marketing and engagement magic that it's capable of. So I can segment, I can create journeys, I can create email templates, I can customize my content, I can develop product recommendations and have this all be informed by Commerce Cloud data. By customizing the storefront, I am now able to trigger these emails, uh, these transactional email experiences, or these journeys, instead of sending these emails directly from Commerce Cloud. Huge, huge efficiency gain. I'm also able, through the CollectJS implementation, able to put in place behavioral monitoring on the storefront. This sends all of my customers' behavior to Marketing Cloud, where I can leverage that and look for specific abandonment scenarios. So. Let's walk through this one more time. We've got data feeds that come from Commerce Cloud, specifically the staging and the production environment. These feeds go to Marketing Cloud's SFP, SFTP and are pulled in through an automation. Once the data feeds are pulled into data extensions, we can now leverage that data as if it's native data to Marketing Cloud, because guess what? At this point, it really is. You could use it to help inform journeys, drive segments, improve your customer attribution, Within the Commerce Cloud storefront, we're going to extend it and replace the marketing, uh, the legacy email hooks with the Marketing Cloud transactional email hooks. And what this now enables us to do is tell Marketing Cloud, send me, send my customers a transactional email like a contact us or an order update or an order confirmation or a welcome message. And then lastly, we can implement behavioral monitoring, which also enables us to take advantage of abandonment scenarios. All right, so look, this is, it's really, really great. On top of this is a reminder, this is a development enablement framework, all right? So what we see customers do is they extend the, the use cases that it natively supports to do other things that are relevant to their customers. A couple of examples are coupon reminder and redemption tracking. We actually have a solution kit for this as well. So if you're interested in that, make sure to download the solution kits. We also do back in stock notifications through the Marketing Cloud Connector. And we also can do new style or new product notifications. All right. If you want to download the Marketing Cloud Connector, you have to be a Commerce Cloud customer uh, or a Commerce Cloud partner. You can download it from our GitHub community at github slash Salesforce Commerce Cloud slash marketing dash cloud dash connector. All right. So I've got about two and a half minutes left. I'm going to try and get through the remaining data strategy piece. Who here is a Marketing Cloud customer? All right, so this, these next pieces are specifically geared for you, 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 and you, and you in the back. So, uh, all right, so within Marketing Cloud, who's, um, who's familiar with subscriber keys? Right, all right, so if you're implementing cross-cloud, we have a strategy in place for what your subscriber key should be, and ideally, it should be your CRM ID. Who here is a Marketing Cloud and a Service Cloud customer? All right, so if you're a Marketing Cloud and Service Cloud customer, you're going to want to use the contact ID, the Salesforce contact ID in Service Cloud as your subscriber key. We're going to walk through why in, why in a minute. If you have an external CRM, use your CRM ID as a subscriber key. The things we want to emphasize here is you don't want to use email, all right? The reason why you don't want to use email is that email does not represent a human being. It represents a channel that a human being communicates through. Who here has more than one email address? Right. So you would all be represented as multiple records in Marketing Cloud if we used email as a subscriber key. So be mindful of this and a little bit of extra emphasis for you there. Now, why do we want to use the contact ID? Here's why. Because in a cross-cloud environment, it gives us a common way to identify our customer. All right? Regardless of whether you're in service cloud, commerce, or marketing, if you don't own service cloud or you're not a service cloud customer, just replace your CRM in this picture, and the same model applies. Now, why is this important? Because when we engage from, well, actually, I'm sorry. Friendly reminder, remember this, the Service Cloud Contact ID or your CRM ID 
is what you should use for as, as a subscriber key, as well as a common way to identify your customers across each cloud. Now, the reason why this is important is that when you interact between commerce and marketing, you don't want to use the email address, you want to use a subscriber key. Why do you want to use a subscriber key? Because this is what enables you to maintain a rich and deep history of how you've engaged with that customer. All right? So, if you're a Salesforce, if you're a Service Cloud customer, you can leverage the contact ID. If you have another CRM, leverage the CRM ID for your customer. Decorate the Commerce Cloud customer with that, and then use that as a subscriber key in Marketing Cloud. Let me advance. I want to get to the last piece. All right, so here's the last piece. We're going to talk about resolution. So here we have a scenario where we have a customer, and she's looking to subscribe to a back-in-stock notification. Now, for customers, most of our interactions with them, candidly, they're anonymous, right? So only about 10% of customers log in, on average, uh, using their storefront credentials. Uh, about 80% of all storefront orders placed are done through guest checkout. Very often, when customers engage with us, they're not authenticating to, to, to proactively show us who they are. They're just giving us their information. So what this means is we need a way to be able to resolve who they are, all right? And so in this scenario, what we're doing is we're kicking off a resolution event to be able to find out if Elaine has an account. She does, we're able to leverage the contact ID as a subscriber key. And even though Elaine hasn't logged in, or maybe Elaine doesn't even own a registered account in our storefront, what this enables us to do is to link this subscription to her history. So this is all about resolution. What I'm trying to convey is resolution is really important. There's a way to do this today in, in this environment. Customer 360 in the future is going to make this a whole lot easier. And so, all right, so we went over a little bit. Give me one second. There we go. All right. As a reminder, if you need to download the Marketing Cloud Connector, you can get it from the Salesforce Commerce Cloud GitHub community via the URL above. Uh, here are a couple of reminders about, hey, if you're doing cross-cloud work or looking to implement cross-cloud solutions, here are the things that you should look for and the way you should think about the problem. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, but I'm happy to meet afterwards. Uh, who here is going to Connections? Awesome. We'll see you guys there. And I want to say thank you. You guys were very good. I hope this was helpful. And um, please enjoy the rest of your conference.